house that they could both share together. Uh, and they, there's, uh, you know, a, a fair amount. We don't haven't talked about it very much, Kathy and I. But you know, I get I get pictures of, of people that want to be my friends, and I go, okay, I don't I don't know this person. I haven't accepted a I haven't accepted a friend on Facebook in a in a, in a while. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I accepted someone. But you know, you you have people sending you pictures, and then it's like, hey, you get these messages, and there are more pictures, and I'm like. This is somebody that has been blackmailed by scammers, uh, and now they've got pic- they've got pictures of them, and they're now using them to attack at me. Uh, at, you know, posing as a lady who wants to get to them. It's like it's it's just a a never ending cycle that takes place, and the uh, the uh, the the emotional investment, the abuse. Uh, verbal abuse, mental abuse that takes place here. And then the, uh, you know, the, the thievery that takes place, it's, uh, it, it's out there and people need to know about it and need to be worried about it. Um, so we've been talking to them now for about two years. Um, it started off with, we're going to hire more people. We're going to educate um, everything that we're, that I think we've all been hoping for. And um, we've seen very little progress. They have said that they're doing this and they're doing that. And, um, have we seen a lot of difference? Not really. No. Um, a lot of the other anti-scam groups are reporting hundreds and thousands of accounts per day of the fake accounts. And I heard many times that they're not seeing a difference. Um, uh, it seems to go in spurts. It seems like sometimes they're trying new things with their, um, uh, with their reporting system. And, and then all of a sudden, None of the accounts are being taken down. So the story, it was first just a parcel, a small incident which grew into a large amount of money eventually. And it was just before my birthday, actually two years ago on the 2nd of August. And this gentleman said to me, oh, it's your birthday. What are you doing? I said, no, I'm going out with friends. We're going to have a breakfast. And he said, well, you can't have your birthday without presents. That is how the whole thing started and it landed up me putting in money in South Africa in a spa and a shop right checkers because spa only takes up to 4,000 Rand and he wanted an amount, well, the shipping company in Cape Town wanted an amount of seven and a half thousand Rand. So I did the two payments, I had my receipts. The next thing I got another call, I was waiting on this wonderful parcel. He sent me pictures with shoes, jewelry, handbags, it was out of the world. I thought, good grief, what's happening to me? Then I got a message from the shipping company saying, but whoa, hang on. You can get arrested and you can go to jail. I said, what have I done? I said, this is a parcel from a friend from UK, James Rue. I wasn't sure how much I know, don't know. What I didn't know at that stage is it went on for a year already, maybe longer. What I also didn't know, it was organized by a man that I met 10 years before that time in a romantic relationship. I wasn't very happy with him. Uh, over a period of two to three years, he on numerous times tried to infiltrate my business and take it away from me until I broke off with him in total. It was organized by him. He was part of an organized crime syndicate in South Africa. And, um, and that's how they planned it. So they were a bit more target orientated in the sense of they moved, they built a house across the road from me where I lived so that they could have my movements in their eye all the time. They stayed very close to me without me knowing. Only afterwards when we went through what happened and what I've been through did we realize that I was actually watched easily a year before the time, if not longer, to, to catch up with my movements. After my divorce, um, I got divorced for personal reasons, I felt that my, my husband then did not give enough attention to me and I felt um, very unloved and I tried to force his hand in changing his attitude towards me and, and that, that failed and we didn't fight for the divorce so I ended up being a divorcee with two teenage or almost grown children and um, well we, started, we, we were chatting for about I think two or three weeks um, and then he was going to come to Port Elizabeth to meet me, but he had to go to UK. It was a um, gold and semi-precious stone dealer, and he had to unexpectedly go to the UK for an exchange. And then it was just after Christmas, we said he's 
daughter was still at school, at boarding school, and he didn't have funds to um, send for, for food or anything like that. And he asked me if I could help send her, oh, it was like 500 rand at the beginning, and then the next week it was 1,000 rand. Um, and I didn't have money at the time, so I sold my jewelry, I sold my wedding ring, so that she could have food. And then she phoned me and thanked me and said that her dad had told her so much about me. And um, she felt that I was a new mom and she was so excited to meet me because as soon as he got home, he was going to bring her down to meet me and we were going to be a happy family. And and, and, and what got me was that he... And uh, so he asked me what type of uh, gift he, he will receive. And then I spent some money about uh, his uh, uh, birthday uh, present and uh, he sent uh, his uh, supervisor and some workers uh, which one came to me to pick up the the gift uh, uh, and uh, he asked me if I have a uh, cash uh, money to give it to him because he wants to treat uh, uh, his workers uh, 26 people and Rick uh, in the sea to treat them for his birthday and so on and we continue this way he's supposed to finish the contract uh, at, uh, that was from, from the beginning of June he's supposed to finish his contract uh, at uh, the end of the year I, he was thinking earlier but that didn't happen because uh, two months before that he started to say that uh, there is uh, some problem in the rig, uh, there is some uh, equipment which one was uh, uh, not working and he's supposed to uh, repair and he needs uh, funds to fix it, uh, that uh, uh, machinery uh, and he needs uh, financial support. That was the beginning of big money to send to him. So, uh, and he promised that uh, once uh, in the two months time come, uh, out from the rig uh, and he will get his payment, he will recover, uh, refund me with uh, the money. Okay, two, years ago, my my, two years ago, my husband passed away and I was told by my kids I should carry on with my life and they loaded me on Instagram. I got about 15 requests on the first day, but I didn't actually accept any of them. On the second day, I got about 30 requests and I singled out one of these requests and I accepted it. Okay, he told me he was a, an oil rig in Norway and he lost his wife. He had three kids and he was practically a millionaire, but he's caught on an oil rig working in Norway. We started chatting. It was approximately about eight or nine months. He never asked for anything. But every day, we used to pray every morning. We used to pray every night. We used to talk religion. And this just wowed me. All of a sudden, he started getting problems financially. And his money was apparently stuck in America. And he couldn't get access to his money. 